Good morning and welcome to the program. The roadmap for football elections demanded by FIFA will be drawn up this weekend in worry, hopefully. And this morning on the program, I will be bringing you stories about elections in Ghana and Cameroon. Even as we pray with a Ghanaian musician, Sonny Badu. Nigeria was fifth in the world. Now 37th. And uh, no hope of again uh, making it uh, to the top five. Not to what we are saying now. Same with Ghana and Cameroon, where things uh, are no better. So this morning, uh, we want to show how problems with soccer administration have affected the development of the game using Cameroon and Ghana particularly. When as we pray and hope that they get it right and worry talking about the roadmap. Now to Ghana. What have they not seen in Ghana? From GFA squabbles to coach and players are quarreling. You recall that Sule Montari and Boateng were sent home not long ago at Brazil 2014. And although they beat Togo 3 2 recently, 0 0 with Uganda in Ghana, right on home soil was unacceptable. Coach Kwesi Apia was fired. And right now, Ghana does not have a senior team coach. Yes, the song of the Ghanaian, Sonny Badu. And cause your rain to fall on me. Baba. Ghana, like Cameroon, Africa's uh, two giants in the eyes of FIFA. Talking about uh, Black Africa, the two countries that have made it to the quarterfinal stage of the World Cup final. Cameroon did in 1990 and Ghana in 2010. Both countries uh, were a disgrace in Brazil 2014. Pay us or we won't play. Cameroon. Pay us or we won't play. Ghana. Players had put in one another, Cameroon. Players laughing while the coach was uh, giving instructions in trading. Ghana. Well, elections are into Feka Foot. Cameroon's uh, Football Association will hold uh, between uh, 10th and 29th of November this year. And uh, right now, only one man has said that he wants to contest. Ebwa Elame Mikado is a journalist. And he says that he wants to get it right for Cameroon. Some are calling on Roger Miller to step out. Hear our cry, O oh God. 
Sonny Badu sings. Well, let's tell that the last elections are into Feka Foot. We're indeed a uh, sad taste. On the day of the elections, the police moved in. The army also moved in with guns. A woman called Melena Emutua said that before the elections, she was told that money must change hands. And although they collected her money, they refused to vote for her. Indeed, on the day of the elections, so annoyed, she punched her Pierre Batamak right there in the hall. As the New Broom magazine of Cameroon put it, the woman did not know that a cabal of football hijackers and mischief makers, driven by sheer self-interests, had a well-crafted plan to make one of their own here the Fekafoot president. And so they clearly deceived her. The elections. John Bernindi Nde, the first vice president, stormed out and failed to vote. And while that was going on, the sports ministry stepped in. Policemen and soldiers arrested Ia, who they named as the chairman, and claimed that he embezzled funds while he was uh, the general manager of a company called uh, Soto Cotton. The president uh, was detained. And it is still said in Cameroon now that it remains an issue. You recall that after South Africa 2010, Samuel Eto and uh, other key players of the squad we're called to face at the disciplinary committee of Feka Foot. And Samuel Leto was banned for 15 games without appealing. It was reduced to two months. The player looking at how things have been going on in Cameroon said that not long ago that uh, football in Cameroon thrives uh, in a very bad environment. Of course, you know what happened in Brazil 2014. Right now, as I talk to you, Eto has dumped Cameroon and says he won't play internationally anymore. Ghana. Elections are we hold in 2015. The president of the GFA right now, the one called Kwesi Yataki, he got into the executive committee of the GFA in 2005. And uh, following uh, problems concerning uh, the then board headed by Tamaklo, he became uh, the acting president of the GFA. And when in 2011, elections uh, were to be conducted, the acting president uh, put himself forward for election. Five uh, candidates uh, submitted documents uh, to the elections committee. To the shock of Ghanaians and those in football in that country. The Ghana Football Association, headed then by acting president Kwesin Nyataki, released this statement, and I quote Further to the notice of Congress dated 31st March 2011, 
and pursuant to Article 26.6 of the GFA Statutes, the Ghana Football Association wishes to inform that only one candidate has qualified to contest the election for the office of the President of the Ghana Football Association in 2011. The candidate is Mr. Kwesi Nyataki. With the poll showing during and after Brazil 2014, many Ghanaians are calling on Yataki to resign. But those who benefit from his staying power are saying he will run for re-election. And who knows? The GFA may again have a committee for elections that will throw up just one candidate. We are running dry, sings Sonny Badu. It was so bad that after Brazil 2014, the sports ministry in Accra left the Ghana Football Association and established what it called the Eminent Administrators Committee with no member of the Ghanaian FA and the committee was charged to look at the problems in Brazil 2014. The committee reported back to the sports minister who said that he was taking the report the presidency in Ghana. And uh, from uh, Takuradi through Tema to Accra, some have screamed at government interference. And so in Nigeria, the roadmap demanded by FIFA. Well, uh, back to Cameroon. Following the arrest of Mohamed Iya and his detention, and all that happened concerning every other person that wanted his seat in Fekafuta, the sports minister raced to Zurich and said that he had come to discuss with FIFA to see how they could make things work. He had his candidate. And that was why he dug up uh, documents concerning uh, Mohamed Ia when he was general manager of Sotokan. FIFA told him, we don't see sports ministers. And uh, because uh, everyone in football was into his or her own uh, separate corner, FIFA then decided that only a committee supervised from Zurich will make football administration work again in Cameroon. And so FIFA came up with a normalization committee of 11 members. That's what we have now in Yaoundé. Suffering in Douala. So many are afraid now that they may be arrested if they come out and save Cameroon. Like it is uh, in so many African countries, ex players of the indomitable lions of Cameroon cannot even contest, can't even come out to file papers. Antoine Bell remains just who he is, no longer the goalkeeper who saved Cameroon so many years ago is just a critic. Like the saying, worry, they're not bad luck him out. I'll let that one remain. In Ghana, Abedi Ayupele, who was at the time Ghana's most recognized that name and face in football was not allowed to file papers for elections in 
to the GFA. And I know that in Nigeria, they want to serve ex-players, but find that all doors are locked. No key, no key, no key anywhere. Sonny Badu this morning. Asking God Almighty to open the floodgate in abundance. Because it's a rain to fall on African football again. Particularly as it concerns soccer administration. From a quarter finalists in 1990, Cameroon crashed out early this year in Brazil. One step forward, two, three, four, five backwards. Only in 2010, Ghana was in the quarterfinal stage. Four years on, two, three, four, five steps back. The NSC begged Nigeria's coach three months after the World Cup. No coach. Coach himself, not seeing eye to eye with those who run football. Players that were not good enough for Brazil 2014 suddenly became good enough for the hustle for a ticket to Morocco. Now, the boastful one, the one who a few years ago was uh, the shaking one. Sheikh's Mashaba of South Africa. He says he will qualify. And that Nigeria will not. He hopes to beat a Congo. And get to Morocco. Just hoping that the roadmap will be done and done well. Those who suffer. You out there. So pray, pray this morning. And that's your beat. Bye. I'm sick as an individual. We don't react fast. We are out of the nation's cup. Imagine it's too much. The degree 101 that came to be the NFA Act of 2004 is still yet to be repealed. And we also have the bill at the National Assembly, which has passed through the second reading, still being kept there waiting. So those are the areas that we need to correct and ensure that the FIFA status is accommodated into the laws of football in Nigeria and as well as repealing those that are not in consonance with the provisions of FIFA. Oh, yeah. this crisis, now wow, you tire me, tire me seriously. I'm not just like him, everywhere. Daddy Shoki say fireball, fireball. <laughs> Confusion everywhere. Oh, yeah. You don't see why the things that they rub our eyes, they will not be seen. But because of the law venery half of uh, the Gabinet Football Group, we have been hearing. He said, okay, we'll be taken down. He don't read the time when they take one talk. I'm not going to let you know what I want to do. Everybody, they go in process. Everybody won't carry something going on house. We said, what does the NRA, they're supposed to recognize us. He said, each time I call me the board member, the female lead board member, NRA went on day, he's the five of all, because they will not go be board member. This one will not go great, you know. We don't have one football club, not one. The controlling body of any football association must be democratically elected. Give me one so-called club in Nigeria that has that uh, type of situation. Members are imposed on the clubs and the um, two things the two. Nigeria is a country where we bring care. We will make chairman of the medical board. And when the medical doctor comes out with his uh, requirements, it will be this chairman, this bricklayer, who will tell him that you know we cannot get this, you cannot do that. Running dry. Larry Zamuja is my name. Bye bye now.